Welcome to today's Grow It Green. We're here with Margaret Hagen of the UNH Cooperative Extension. The snow is gone. The spring is here. We're talking bulbs today. We are talking bulbs. <laughs> and we're not talking spring flowering bulbs like the daffodils over here. We're talking about bulbs you can plant that will bloom in the summer for you and give you a really nice pop of color. So some of these might look familiar to some folks, right? right? Gladiolus are a traditional one, um, and they're great because they make a super cut flower, and you could bring them inside in August when they bloom and enjoy them both outside and in. Dahlias are another one um, that people are very well acquainted with, and the dahlias um, come from this very interesting sort of rhizome-like um, bulb sort of structure mm -hmm. and you can these are little dwarf ones but you can also grow the 10 feet tall dinner plate dahlias too so it just depends on your um, taste and the gladiolus come from something that's called a corm and you need to make sure when you plant these that you plant them right side up so this is the bottom and this where it looks like new growth is going to come is the top and so you have something specific to say as far as when we plant bulbs, right? Right. Most of these don't like cold soils, so it's really smart if you wait until after the last frost date, which for southern New Hampshire would be maybe the last week in May, the first week in June. And in northern New Hampshire, I wouldn't put these in until at least the end of the first week in June. Okay. Okay. And then also, too, you were saying some of these are great to couple together, They right? are. So the gla both of these, the caladiums and the gladiolus, bloom in August. So maybe pick a color of gladiolus that matches the caladiums a little bit and put these in front because they're not quite as tall. And so then you have a steps of color that can blend together really well. And um, over here I have two that I would probably want to put together. One is canna lilies, and you can see they come like this. And so when you plant them, you, you want to make sure that the growing points are up. These are going to be a gorgeous color, and they would go really well with these little cormlets called crocosmia. The um, canna would go in the middle, and the crocosmia go, would go around it. And so this would be about two and a half to three feet tall, and this would get to be about five feet tall. Which and these I would maybe put in a container so that you could move it around or put it as a focal point or standout point somewhere. And then, and then yeah. lastly, everybody loves lilies. We all do. <laughs> um, the only problem is you always have to combat the red lily leaf beetle, which tends to chew on the foliage and leave um, not much left behind it except piles of fecal matter. But sometimes it's worth it to plant oriental lilies or something like this tiger lily. Just be aware that you may have to go out and hand pick like every week during the summer to keep them from taking over your plants. And our last point. If you want to save the plants, you have to be right. able to take those out of the ground, right? Right. The only thing that's perennial are the lilies. All the rest of these, if you want to save them for another year, after the foliage has died back in the fall, you need to lift them out of the ground and store them somewhere about 45 degrees. So a bulkhead or a heated garage would be an ideal place. Thank you, Margaret. You're welcome. Thanks for all those great tips. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.